All right, so welcome to lecture 20, Contractional Tectonics. We are going to discuss about fold and thrust belts, parts of origins, and we'll see the tectonic settings, structural styles, structural evolution, uh, the development of thrusts and folds, and then we'll end with the example that is here in Bogota and Eastern Cordillera of Colombia. Uh, Gabriel, I haven't forgotten your uh, a suggestion for some uh, examples uh, that might be visited here in our part of the world here in terms of uh, rifts. So I, uh, I, I looked at I, them. I just didn't have time. Yes, some some ribbons though that, they, they are possible to be found everywhere as you told us uh, last time. But uh, for yeah. example, some some little examples. Uh, not in large scales of observancy, yes. but uh, also if it's possible, um, some rift valleys here in South America. See, sure, sure. I will look. I uh, uh, that's why I say that, that these are not world class examples like the ones we discussed, except for the rifted margins, the passive margins of the continent. But this kind of, as we discussed, uh, local examples, they are everywhere, and some of them are hidden. But I will look them up, I promise. Just didn't have time. So sit back and relax now, all of you, uh, for the topic today. Now, we will travel a bit around the world, but the idea is we, we look at the, um, at the theory behind this. And when we discuss about the origins, you will already know about this part of the origins. So this is a satellite image, as you can see. There is a very, very famous world class fold uh, and thrust belt. It is in Iran. You see the Pers Persian Gulf. Um, so Iran is one of those places that are a geologist's dream because it's arid. So you can go and, and see the structures and see uh, basically the rocks exposed and so on. And you can see here these uh, large scale uh, folds developed here. And uh, there are also thrusts. Um, um, in this region. So the, just for you to know, a very famous uh, fold and thrust belt in the world. But we have them here, as I say, a, a very famous one is Yuan of the Andes. So let's move on. Um, I'll show you Andes as well. So, so that's why I'm saying we are traveling a bit around the world. This is in the Rocky Mountains uh, in Canada, Rocky Mountains ex extending from the um, United States into Canada. And uh, if you go to uh, visit Alberta, you are going to, to see spectacular geology as well. Um, and the fold and thrust belts are spectacular. Um, and what happens, you can see here, you can see the thrust, uh, a thrust called the McConnell thrust fold. And what it does, and I think it is impressive if you look at the information given here. So we have rocks that are 500 million years old. So they are from the Cambrian, yeah? And then they sit on top of much younger, like more than 400 million uh, years separate in age, these two uh, formations. And you can see that the older ones sit on top of the much younger ones. And you, you might wonder how come? I mean, this is impressive. Thinking about this huge mass, being uh, thrust on top uh, of the other um, uh, layer. All right, so you can see what happens with these thrust folds. You see they are low angle. Um, and uh, in all these uh, well-developed orogenic belts, uh, old and uh, contemporary, you are going to uh, see um, the fold and thrust belts. And basically this is where the uh, contraction happens. This is where the shortening happens. Yeah. So this uh, you can see now mechanically the explanation for the shortening. All right. So uh, moving on. Uh, sorry. We now travel to our continent here. Uh, at the end, we'll go to Colombia. Now we are still looking here, and uh, you can see we are looking at. Uh, several country, countries here. We have Chile uh, in this part from Marica, Calama, and you can see all this. Then uh, on this side, we have uh, Argentina and then Bolivia. 
So this is the Altiplano Boliviano. Uh, here we have the Atacama Desert and Calama is a very famous center for the exploitation of copper. As you know, there are very famous uh, copper mines in Northern Chile. And um, if you look at this digital elevation model, which I think it is really cool, I think, uh, you see this Eastern side of the Andes, in this case, the Central Andes. And this is the fold and thrust belt. So today we are focusing on these parts of the orogens. Later on, we'll discuss the whole origin. But now we are getting into the uh, thinking um, regarding the origin belts. So um, if you were to do a cross section here, it's the one here. Now I, I've blown it up a bit, yeah? So it's not the same scale like here, but it, it extends from here, you see in the Altiplano, uh, down here um, in the foreland of the Andes in Bolivia. And um, here, uh, here, you can see in this cross section and you see what it says. It says the stacking of long, which we mean 200 kilometers thick, 10 to 15 kilometers basement, mega thrust sheets are these ones that you see here. These are the mega thrust sheets. So you see how they moved along these thrust folds, yeah, along these thrust folds. And obviously the sedimentary layers at the top, you see the imbrication here and all these uh, folds. And there are also folds there when we look in detail. So very, very impressive what we are looking at. Now, Coming back to the Rocky Mountains, to the Rocky Mountains, uh, as I was saying, if you go in Alberta from the Western Canada sedimentary basins, you go into the foothills, there is oil exploration exploitation here. Um, but you get into the Rocky Mountains. This part of the Rocky Mountains that you see here, where you see all this imbrication, all these thrusts above this um, basal, basal main detachment surface, yeah? So you'll, you'll see the word detachment or decolment, various words or uh, basal thrust uh, surface. So from this, all these thrusts, yeah? Creating these very, very complex structures. Now, the fold and thrust belts are, an, uh, let's say, are part of the anatomy of typical orogenic belts, and they have formed in all eras of geologic time. Um, yeah. And this is where the shortening is accommodated. Now, here are, is a statement. It says, no single map or cross-section can give you a universal image of a fold and thrust belt. Now, the reason is what it means a universal image. Can we have a complete model, comprehensive model? And the, the answer is no, because we have many factors that uh, come into play, may or may not, depending on the uh, particular situation at that location, that create the result. So there are some common lines, but look at these factors. So plate tectonic setting, yeah. Then one question is, these thrusts, are they basically taking up only the sedimentary cover layers? one on top of the other, as in the image I've shown, or also the basement, yeah? So this is another factor. Now, what the role of mechanical stratigraphy means is some layers, yeah, are more susceptible to developing thrusts, yeah? So basically this is less competent, the thrust uh, is flat, more competent, the, the thrust is oblique. I'll show you this. Um, and various other processes or orogeny is so complex. I mean, but it is impressive. Yeah. So when I talk about uh, seen orogenic erosion, uh, the position, so all these processes happening at the same time lead to the, uh, to the complex development of what we have in the end. All right, so you can read these factors just to see the complexity and why so many people, and I'm pretty sure some of you will go into researching and studying and developing career um, in some way or another 
related to orogenic belts. Now, here is something very important. Um, the terms foreland and hinterland. Yeah. So, you know, you, we have the thrust belt and the idea is the undeformed region of the continent in front of the thrust belt is called the foreland direction. Yeah. That's where you see all this thrusting towards the foreland. So here in our case, in Bogota, when we go to the Janus Orientalis, that's the foreland, yeah? That's the foreland of the Andean belt uh, on the Eastern side of the continent where we have the cratonic part of the continent. Now, what's behind, what's behind the fold and thrust belt, like the Central Cordillera, the Pacific Cordillera and so on, all these are the hinterland of the origin, yeah? So just for you to know, because this, these are names that you will see very often in the literature, yeah, what the foreland means. All right, but I'll show you. Now, something interesting, you remember we discussed about the rheological stratification, the lithospheric plates that they behave in an elastic manner and so on. And we discussed a bit about isostasy yeah, and the loading uh, and the thickening of the crust and the lithosphere, the crust thickens because you have the shortening where we have the orogenic belts. The lithosphere, think about the fact that the, the lithospheric plate is depressed, yeah? So think about this if you were in high school to study physics and someone would try to show you uh, all this, what uh, uh, rigidity means, yeah? All these aspects of materials, they would show to you this image that you see in B. Now, this image seems to you very intuitive and normal. Now, if we translate this into an orogenic belt, yeah, this weight here, what you see here is, as you can see, this part where it says uh, below er uh, the word erosion, this part where you see all these thrusts, that is the fold and thrust belt. And then behind, behind is the internal zone of the origin. So you see in front of the of the fold and thrust belt is the foreland, foreland direction. Yeah, this is where the continent is and it's not deformed, undeformed continental interior. Now, very important, this thing called foreland basin. Now you understand the for the cause of the formation of the foreland basin. Yeah. So think about yeah, the Janus Orientalis, yeah, we have sedimentary layers. Think about the Western Canada sedimentary basin, yeah, and they have the oil exploration, the development of the sedimentary basin, yeah, in front. All oh, right, so we have uh, problemas with the connection. Let me see, uh, anyone can hear me? We're hearing you. I can. If anyone can hear me, please let me know. Yes, teacher. Can you listen to us? I have to stop here and I'm waiting for the connection to resume. Hello, teacher. Can you listen to us? I'm stopping here the recording and I will start a new one when the red uh, recovers. So, anyone can hear me now?
chicos, el profe está, está en Teams. No sé si se puede unir o algo. Gracias.